President Biden approved an emergency declaration in North Carolina on Saturday as Ian moved through that state. Four people have died in North Carolina, and more than 200,000 remain without power in a state that also has its own history of deadly storms. And North Carolina Governor Democrat Roy Cooper joins me now. Governor Cooper, let me just start with, um, look, North Carolina was spared compared to Florida, but the fact is you had four fatalities, you've got some power outages. What's the situation? What's the latest? Well, we had a peak of over 400,000 power outages, and now we're at about 33,000. We've got about 48 roads closed. Our hearts go out to the people who lost their lives, and certainly we have avoided the worst of it, and we sympathize with the people in Florida. We've offered help to them. We already have some logistical help on the ground in Florida, and since the storm has passed North Carolina, we are already in discussions with uh, Florida officials to try to make sure that we help them. This is a time when we all have to pull together uh, right. to make sure that people are safe. A lot of times people lose their lives in the, the aftermath, trying to repair homes, running generators. We had a man die because he was running a generator inside a garage and died of carbon monoxide poisoning. So the after effects of these disasters are always uh, critical and we need to pay attention to it. Let's talk about rebuilding uh, from these disasters. North Carolina's had to do it. The Florida's had to do it quite a few times. Um, is it time to put more strings when it comes to rebuilding so that every dollar that's spent is done for resiliency, so that it's better for the next time? Uh, and who should pay for that? North Carolina has had a front row seat when it comes to the effects of climate change. And uh, we are making sure that we've become a clean energy uh, safe haven mm -hmm. and that we are paying attention to resiliency. I've done a climate risk assessment and resiliency plan. You have to make tough decisions when you rebuild. We've had two 500-year floods uh, within 23 months of each other. And we know that that's not true anymore. We know that these areas are vulnerable. So what we're doing is making sure that we are using strategies like elevation mm -hmm. and even uh, buyouts. We've gone into local communities. They've gotten hit several times. Mm -hmm. It has just become better to make sure that we create green space with the place where homes and businesses used to be to soak up water that may come yeah. from a, a river flood and then to relocate people. Those are tough decisions, but they're going on right now. We also need to make sure that our electric grid is more right. resilient, and I'm thankful for right. the federal help that's come uh, in that ar arena. We know that we're going to be working on uh, updating our grid, making sure right. that we are more resilient into the future. Look, should uh, flood insurance be mandatory uh, if, in the state of North Carolina at this point if you own a home? Uh, there's Obviously, you guys have been dealing with a lot of flooding risk. And should we be banning mobile manufactured housing? Well, we think that mobile manufactured housing built in the right way and sometimes elevated can be good for people uh, to make sure that they have an affordable place to live. We are pushing and encouraging people to buy flood insurance. We know that particularly in these areas that are hit time and again, that we gotta be more resilient. So I think all of those issues have to be on the table. Uh, like Senator Scott, you have a, a secondary job as well as an elected official. You head up the Democratic Governors Association. You're the campaign arm to help Democrats either win governorships or get reelected. Let me ask you this, you a year ago thought uh, you would expand the number of Democratic governorships. You still confident of that this November? I still think we can, but, but remember we are swimming upstream. When you look at history, the party of the White House doesn't do well in the first midterm. In fact, I think in 2010, Republicans flipped uh, 11 governor's seat uh, after two years of the President Obama administration, and in 2014, I think they flipped four seats. Yeah. So we've got a lot of incumbents to defend because in 2018, 
Democratic governors did well. And it's really important that we have Democratic governors across this country, particularly when you look at the effects of the U.S. Supreme Court. What we thought were constitutional rights and freedoms are now going to be tossed to state capitals and right. state legislatures. And it matters who your governor is. So we think that we have okay. a good chance even for pickups, not just defending our area, but for pickups as well, even in a historically difficult time. Your organization, the DGA, has spent money to promote election deniers in Republican primaries. You did it in Illinois, Maryland, and Pennsylvania. Are you comfortable with that? These election deniers won, and Pennsylvania's poll numbers are close. If one of them wins, you're going to regret it? First, there were no Liz Cheney's running for governor across this country. Second, these were big front runners uh, and won by big margins. And it was, is important for the DGA to make sure that voters are reminded of these candidates' extreme positions, even during the primary. Because what you are seeing now is some of these candidates trying to moderate their positions. And the DGA was running the same message during primaries that they are in the general election about the extreme nature of these candidates. Uh, right. The goal here is to defend our democracy, to make sure we defend rights and freedoms, that we get competent people as CEOs of our state. We okay. know how important it is. And I think it's critical that people look closely at their candidates for governor as we approach this midterm because those governors are going to be making big decisions that affect everyday people's lives. All right, Governor Roy Cooper, a Democratic incumbent governor who's not on the ballot this time. You guys are always on the presidential cycle in North Carolina, head of DGA, but also dealing. I hope, hope, hope um, your death toll stays as it is uh, and we get power on soon. Thank you, Governor. Thanks, Chuck. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.